Good afternoon and welcome to Masterclass Junior. Spring has sprung. It is broad daylight out there. The clocks have changed. Spring is here, isn't it, Tom? You've got your shorts on, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah, got his legs out, you see? Right, today's recipe, I've got this fantastic kids kedgeree. So a rice dish with a spice blend, but not really spicy, just sort of aromas, aromatics, not much chilli at all because it's for the kids. Um, some lovely salmon, so really good for you. It's a one pot dish. Got my boy to help me. Shall we start cooking? Right, okay. So, Thomas, what I've got here are a blend of spices. Okay? Now you're gonna add them into my pestle and mortar and I want you to crush them, yeah? and blend them. Now this dry spice blend is really good. Right, so first of all, let's try and remember what we've got. I've got them written here, um, but we've got some onion powder, some gar, do you want to do this? <laughs> Garlic powder, here you go. And I will try and remember, with a little bit of help, what we've got. So in our spice mix, and we've actually made this before, when we did our curry last, I showed you how to make a really beautiful dry spice blend. We're using it again. And I just wanted to kind of show you how diverse it can be, how useful it is to make extra and keep it in your dish and just use it anytime you want. So, if you have any questions at all while we were cooking, please do fire them over on Facebook. Emily's just popped over there. She's going to answer any of the questions. She'll ask me them and I will answer them live for you. Now, in here we've got coriander, cumin, garam masala, we've got ginger, paprika, turmeric, salt, ground pepper, tiny bit of chilli powder, if you like, if you and your kids like it warmer, put a bit more in, but I've got a tiny amount in, okay, and then some onion powder and some garlic powder, so good dry powder, Just give it a little shake, Tom. Right, now you use your pestle and mortar, now this is a masterclass pestle and mortar, it's the big boy. To me, this is the size you want. It is heavy, it's big, it's weighty, and it just, it does the job well. For me, small pestle and mortars are not right. This one's brilliant. What are you eating? Raw rice. Raw rice, I wouldn't. Right, grind that together. But if I just sort of show you this way. Is that, that no, that one, Emily wants it in that one. <laughs> so that's it, and just, I mean, it's all dry spices anyway but a pestle and mortar just grinds it all together and really brings it together as a blend of spices that works. Amazing on chicken, on salmon, really good in, in the rice. We're gonna use a bit in the rice, a bit in the salmon. Great on sweet potato wedges, amazing. Or if you wanna do like a, a spiced roast chicken on a Sunday, you can sort of cut the thighs, marinate it all up inside and out, roast it all up, it'd be delicious. Right. So, are we all done? Yeah. Okay, brill. So, that is our spice mix. Now, let's get the heat up. Let's do some onion chopping, young sir. Wow. Now, onion I know. Do you know what? Everything does have onions in, doesn't it? It's a good sort of base for flavour. Garlic, ginger, onions. In fact, let's do garlic first. Can we just move the press of water out of the way? Of you? Just of course we can. Garlic. Thank you. Emily's got, oh, what happened there? Right, so we've got our garlic, ginger. Do you like ginger? Right. Have a little smell. This, when you cut ginger open, look, I cut myself today. Look, happens to the best of us. Cut myself today. He never does it on camera, we're all waiting for it. I try not to do it on camera, if I can help it. <laughs> right, so, have... I'm still waiting for it. You, you don't actually want me to cut myself, do you? Have a smell of that. Does it smell like gingerbread man? I like grass made gingerbread. Yeah, we like a grass made gingerbread. If you're out there watching, we do like a grass made gingerbread, don't we? Right, so, do you want to slice your garlic? Oh, up yeah. into little slices, so I'll show you how to do it. Little slices like that, if you can. Oh, teeny. Just, yeah, I just want you to take your time and cut little slices, all right? Just take your time with your knife. That's it. Good lad, well done. So I've got two chopping boards. It's all right. Yeah. And when you're a big boy like me, you can do it like that. 
Have we got any questions come our way yet, Emily, or not? Not at the moment. No questions, okay, good. So, Thomas is just gonna chop up that piece of garlic there. Now, ginger and garlic work really, really well together. So, the way to treat ginger, you could grate it if you wanted to. Um, I'm gonna chop it because we've got the time with the cook. So this will all cook in 20 minutes, which is really good. So if you use ground ginger if you don't have so using ground ginger, yes you can, totally. Um, fresh ginger gives you a really nice fragrance and aromatic sort of character to the dish. And to be honest, it's worth having in the fridge, at the bottom of the fridge. It keeps for ages. Um, and if you want like a really healthy drink, a couple of slices of ginger, slice of lemon, boil the kettle and pour it over and you've got it. What is he up to? There's a little pile of white chocolate button. buttons over there. Been That's how we keep him in the kitchen. <laughs> right. I've had a question, Pete. Yes. How long can you keep the spice mix in the jar? Well, to be honest, that'll keep for a good couple of months, no problem. The longer you keep it, the less aromatic it is. So if you make it in smaller batches, but I promise you, once you start making it, you'll use it in loads of different things because it even some big thick Greek yogurt, a teaspoon of that, stir it in, it's an amazing dip. Really, really nice. Friday night, glass of wine, a few pizza breads in the toaster, happy days. Right, so back to the ginger. We're gonna cut it into matchsticks now. And then can you cut it into little pieces for me? Mm -hmm. A little pile at a time, yeah? I'll do the matchsticks, you do the dice. Take your time, yeah? We've got 100% survival rate on this show. Mm -hmm. We need to keep it that way, all right? Ten fingers and ten toes by the end of it. Ten fingers? I've got eight fingers and two thumbs. What have you got, Tom? Oh, I don't know. I've got eight fingers and two thumbs. Well done, you see. Just like your dad, you. <gasps> awesome. That, yeah, that's awesome. Somebody, somebody that's asked, awesome. Somebody asked if you can use the spice mix on tofu. Yes, of course you can. Yeah. Is that Kate Lavender? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kate. You and your tofu queen. Yes, you can. Because tofu tastes of nothing and it needs lots of help. It needs lots of flavour. Right, so that's um, olive oil in the pan. Bring me your garlic, your ginger. Of course it was Kate. <laughs> Old peg leg at the minute. Right, so let's get these into the pan. So, ginger in first and then garlic. Okay. Right, Thomas, time for onions. So what we're gonna do, get that spoon there and just give that a little stir. So just stir the ginger and the garlic together. We're gonna add a little bit of salt in there and that'll start drawing the moisture out. And then me and Thomas are gonna have a race. No, you're gonna win. No, we're not gonna have a race. We're gonna have a lesson. Right, okay? If you have a wife with you. No, not really. Um, it'll be fine. I use red for colour, red is sweeter. Right, cut in half. Now remember, you need to cut through the roots, like that. So watch Dad, keep your thumb tucked in. Do you see how my thumb is like that? It's not like that, it's not flat, it's curled up. All right, take your time, keep your fingers away. That's it, good lad. No, 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 go on, push. <laughs> you need a bigger knife, don't you? Or some bigger muscles. There you go. Right, okay, so watch Dad. Slice, don't slice all the way through, you need to leave a little bit connected, because that holds the onion together. Yeah? You do that? Other, other way around? That way around. That's all right, it's fine. So, do you want us to watch again? Tom? Yeah. So the core is there, at that top bit, yeah. in three quarters of the way. Curl that thumb in and then down like that, yeah? Yeah? Oh, I see. You see? Nice and steady. Take your time. Move your hands as you get closer. That's it. Show off. I know, can't help it. What other way can you cut it if you don't feel as confident with a knife, or is that the best way to do it? Uh, I mean, the best way to do it, yeah, to learn it. There are some amazing little gadgets out there. Uh, Kitchen Craft do a little uh, hand chopper. Um, that'll do, right? And then do the same on the next one, which works really well. My wife uses it all the time, absolutely loves it. 
Um, you could grate an onion if you want, but what you do is you lose your texture. So what you need is a really good sharp knife that you're comfortable with. These ones, edge keeper ones, are really good because this little red, this sheath here protects the knife and this little red bit there sharpens it. So every time you put it in, it sharpens it. Every time you take it out, it sharpens yeah. it. So a sharp knife is a safe knife. Okay? You alright Tom? I can't get that one. Oh, I'll do that for you. There you go. Right, now normally when we're trying to dice them really fine, we cut in like that, but we don't need to on this one. So just pinch it together. You imagine if you were doing that, pinch, pinch, and then push your knife through. Wait, yeah? Can we do it on that sideways? So, yeah, so pinch it like that, and then push your knife through to cut. All right, keep your fingers and your thumb curled up like that. Remember, Tom, like that? Yeah. Like that. That's it, push your knife through. Push forwards and backwards, yeah? And then you're using the edge of the knife. Um. All right? Do you want me to do that bit and you do that bit? Do the first bit. Okay, good lad. Right, so as soon as you're done, can you put all those onions into our curry, wait, wait. into our pan, yeah? yeah? No, we're not doing that, are we? Pinch it together and you slice. I'll hold it. Push forwards. Push, you know like when Dad does it uses a saw, you push forwards and backwards. Yeah? That's it. To be honest, you need a bigger knife like Dad. But I don't trust you enough to have this knife. What's wrong? Have the onions got you? Oh, the onions have got him. Never mind. Right, in with our onions. And let's turn the heat up and the fan on. What's up, son? Has it got you? Honestly. Right, in with our rice. This is easy cook rice. So it's been pre-cooked, so it only takes about 12, 13 minutes to cook. Now you could use wild rice, basmati rice, I wouldn't use medium grain rice because it's too starchy and you end up with sort of rice pudding type texture. Medium grain rice is better for risottos and sushi and things like that. So in with our easy cook rice. Do you want to grab um, one of those black spoons there? And you're going to give that a stir for me. It smells good already. Those darn onions, eh, Thomas? Right, we've got a couple of pieces of salmon here. A couple of Phillips. And then we are going to take our spice mix, which is here. And just marinate them. So, a little bit on there. And a little bit on this one. Could you use a little bit of pipe with this? Types of fish? Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Prawns would be good on this. Mm. Um, and you could probably throw them in frozen, I would have thought, and they'll just kind of cook, cook in it. Um, you could use, uh, hake works really well. Um, you could use tuna on this. I mean, I use salmon because I quite like the oiliness and the richness of salmon. It works really well with the spices. It kind of takes quite nicely. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you could use cod, you could use hake, trout, um, scallops would work, it, it, you know, um, prawns would be good. And like you said before, can you put things like chicken and that in this? Yeah, thing? if you're not a fish eater, you could, do, um, you could do it with chicken, absolutely. You could do it with turkey, you could do it with pork, um, you could probably do, I would do this with chicken thighs rather than chicken breast because I quite like chicken thighs. Uh, I think the richness cooks better, more flavour, things like that. So we've got some rice, we've got some stock here. Are you going to pour this in for me, Tom? It's chicken stock. I want you to pour a third of it. Yeah, we've done fractions, haven't we? I'm doing fractions. You're doing fractions now, so a third of that. Yeah, so how much are you going to leave in the jug? Zero, because you've already done a quarter. No, if you're going to pour a third out, that's going to leave two thirds left. Because that's a whole one. Anyway, we're not here to do maths, are we? We're here to cook. Right, there we go, that'll do for now. Right, do you want to keep stirring that? And then use these, these little rubber handles on here, I mean you won't burn yourself. Alright? 
Okay, so we're going to turn our attention to the salmon in a minute. I'm going to move Thomas over to the next hob. Pop yourself over there, sunshine, and keep cooking. Look, you're nearer the chocolate now, aren't you? Yeah. Right, so non stick pan. I'm going to teach you how to cook salmon really well. Okay? Hey? You've done a lot with salmon. I've done a lot with salmon, have I? I like salmon. It's a good dish. You've done too much with onions. No. So, a little bit of oil on the fish, okay? Never heat the pan. Never put oil in the pan. Always put oil on the ingredient. So, Easter soon. Got a nice recipe for you at the weekend. And what is it? Really nice. So I've got a little bit of chopped coriander there. We're going to use that to finish our dish with. Got some wedges of lime. I'm just waiting for the, um, the pan to heat up. So if you have any questions at all, that would be really nice right now. Can you just give us a random question about fractions? Yeah. Pan's getting hot. Hot cross buns at the weekend. Got a nice recipe for you. Homemade hot cross buns. It's going to be on Saturday. Um, it's really, really nice. Right, my pan is on. Let's pop the extractor on. You keep going, Tom. You're going to add a little bit more chicken stock to that, please. That stock there. Right. So, pan is hot. Okay, are we on the, this pan? Yep. Yep. Lay it away from you. Okay. That's it. Now we add a tiny bit more oil. Knock the heat down, we've got a hot pan. Good cooking is all about control. Making sure that you are in control of everything that's happening. Um, and that, that's how good, that's how chefs cook well, is being in control. Right, so don't touch the salmon. Let it caramelize, okay? Let it cook, it will release itself. I use these pans a lot because I can just pop this in the oven. It's got a metal handle um, and they work really well. All chefs have pans that go straight into the oven. You alright son? Yeah. Good. But How's my rice? But everybody has hands. Hmm? Everybody has hands. Handle. Metal handle. <laughs> yeah. No. So what are you looking forward to making this weekend Tom? Hot cross buns you want to make? Thomas wants to make chocolate hot cross oh. buns. Not sure. Bit of a purist myself. That sounds good. Right. Oh, Emily. Yes. We need to see this. Right, I've got a little bit of, I don't want to waste these spices because this is all amazing flavour. So I'm going to add that into the pan. Thomas, you, you stir that in. Are we on the pan, Emily? We are. Right, let's turn it over. Look I at don't that. Mind Perfectly cooked, crisp, golden. That's what we want our salmon to look like, okay? I don't mind how much Good, because I've made some amazing ones and I can't wait to share the recipe with you. Emily needs to photograph them first, Thomas. You are not, you are not having them. Right, now, I've got some spinach. In my recipe, I've said some spinach, okay? Um, now, I've been out and picked some wild garlic today and it's very young and tender, so it's similar to spinach. It's just got a, a mild garlic flavor. So I'm gonna use that today instead. All right? How are we looking, son? Good. Are we all right? Yeah. Good. Okay, so salmon, that needs three minutes in the oven, 180 degrees. So I'm gonna pop that in. Right. We're going to poach some eggs. So with kedgeri, you would have eggs. Now normally you would do hard boiled eggs, but I'm not a big fan. What's up? Bubble. That's what we want. So we want it to bubble. Do you have No, absolutely not. If you don't like eggs, it doesn't matter. It's just going to be more like a biryani type dish yeah. then, I think. Which is, you know, which is good. We're a bit short on the questions today, aren't we? Have we got a few people about today? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, good. Good. Especially the... Right, <laughs> look. So keep stirring the rice. And the idea is that the moisture and the liquid will absorb into the rice 
and cook it. Okay? So, Thomas, we're going to poach some eggs. Do you know how to poach eggs? Yeah, you need to go. Right. Uh, no. Let's pop that down there. Pop that there. Put the lid on, but just off centre. So it'll let all the moisture out because for this particular dish, I want the moisture to come out and absorb the flavour into the rice. So, we're going to poach some eggs. I like a little bit of vinegar in my water for poaching. Okay. Let's get it up to the boil. Lid on. <coughs> okay. Got some eggs, fresh eggs. Now, poaching eggs is um, is a skill that a lot of chefs, a lot of chefs interview for a job is actually poaching eggs because it's all about the preparation, the attention to detail, and then the execution. And all those skills are so vitally important to chefs. Like, uh, when, I, when I took a job, um, I remember my interview being, right, poach me some eggs for lunch, and then we'll talk. And that was my job interview. Um, so, poaching eggs, I love poached eggs. So, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna go through it. So, we've gone through cooking fish really well, We've gone through cooking the rice. We've got that going nicely. That is boiling up well, Thomas. Good job. And then we're going to poach some eggs. All really good skills that everyone should have in the kitchen. We are almost at boiling point. I have just enough time for a question from Emily. <laughs> Put her on the spot there. That's that one there. You say people cooking poached eggs like in advance. Yeah. They do, and I've got some in advance there as well, so that I can show you more. Because poaching eggs is not exciting. Um, what you do is you poach them for maybe two or three, two or three minutes max, and then plunge them into cold water. So if you were doing a dinner party and you wanted to, I don't know, do a, a nice salad with a poached egg to begin, with, tuna niçoise, something like that, um, you would. I would suggest you poach your eggs in advance and then all you've got to do is plunge them into hot water, 20 seconds, done. Okay. So it's a good way to sort of good... So you can kind of cook them in Yeah, advance. and a lot of chefs in restaurants will poach their eggs in advance so that they know they've got everything ready and it's just bringing everything together. Planning and preparation prevents poor performance is what my father used to say. <laughs> Very deep. Right, water's just come up to the boil, okay? Well, don't use balsamic because it'll make everything go really brown and murky. Use white vinegar, a red wine vinegar at a push. Um, white vinegar is probably the best to do, or just cheap distilled vinegar. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the pan handle and I'm going to spin the water. So this is going to create a whirlpool motion, Tom. Ready? So the water is now spinning like that. So when I put an egg in the middle, what's going to happen? The water's going to spin around it. So, crack your egg. I'm going to show you two techniques, actually. There we go. Just at the top of the water, and then let the water spin around. Now, I've got another technique for you, which is slightly different. Um, a small coffee cup. Do you want to crack the egg into there for me? Okay. Crack it nice and crack it right open quick. Yeah, because we don't want to break the yolk. Oh, crikey. That's all right. We're all good. So, what you do is when you poach eggs, it's a little bit like releasing a goldfish that you've won at the fair. You know, when you sort of put it in the water, you cut the bag open, and you slowly let it swim out. Yeah? You with me? You know what I'm talking about? No. Whereas if you put the egg, and because I've got a handle, I can submerge this into the water. The water will push the egg out of the cup and into the water and cook. So, like so. Do you see, Tom? Don't lift it out straight away. Let it sit and then release it. And then, because you're using a cup, you have a handle, and there you go. No. Emily's like. I just know why you use a goldfish. My euthanisms are bizarre to say the least, aren't they, Emily? Yeah. Right, let's get the fish out of the oven and let that rest because that is cooked. And what I'm going to do is a little touch, a little tip for you. 
Now, my salmon's just come out of the oven, okay? I'm just gonna pop it on a plate. Watch your legs, Tom. Lad, I'm just gonna pop it there for a second. I'm gonna add a touch of water. And what that does is stops the fish drying out and it brings all the cooking juices from the bottom of the pan and lifts them up into the sauce. Because what, what I'll show you now is fish is notorious for drying out, okay? And people are like, oh, quick, 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 quick. Um, but what I've done now is I've slowed the pan's heat right down. And look at that water. It's got all the spices and all the color. That stopped the fish cooking. So it's now just resting, it's just chilling out. I've got some nice liquid there, and it's gonna be delicious. Right, let's take these eggs, and we'll just plop, pop them into some cold water. There we go. There. What I'm going to do now is just grab a couple of my eggs. In fact, I'm gonna get three. How's Thomas's rice looking? Perfect. Well done, Thomas. Right, so can we see this, Emily? You can. can. You can see how the rice has absorbed the liquid. And what happens when you're cooking rice is on the absorption method, that's easier to say than you think, um, you start to see these little sort of craters where the water is evaporating. Can you see, Thomas? That's how I know when it's cooked, yeah? So if I start to now move it about, I've just got that tiny little bit more liquid to cook out. Just enough time to bring it all together. Okay, so I'm gonna get my eggs, which I've plunged into cold water. No, I won't. And then let's just drop those into warm water, into the boiling water, should I say. And we'll let those finish off. Now, to me, the eggs are gonna make this dish. They really, really are. Right, Tom, do you wanna get that big serving platter over there, please? It's kind of a nice little tap on the table to then everybody Especially on a spring evening like this. I mean, it's, it's almost warm enough to eat out now, isn't it? Yeah. Certainly open the patio doors. Yeah. Certainly open the patio doors. So, let's take our spinach or wild garlic I'm using and coriander. Can you stir that together, Thomas? Oh, yeah. Yeah, stir that up. Is that all right, that hole there, Emily? Uh, a little further back for me. Further back? Further. Okay, it's fantastic. It's yeah, give that a really good stir, Tom. And then we're gonna plate this up because we are done and ready for dinner. Has anyone got any questions before we finish this recipe off? Are we all right? Is everyone okay? Good. Right, so you can kind of see We've just stirred all that together. Do you want me to spoon this on or are you going to? Yeah, anytime soon, Thomas, you know, no rush. I'll do it. <laughs> right, I know you were. So there's our rice cooked. Right, watch yourself, please. So let's just spread that out there. Now, I've got four lime wedges there, Thomas. I want you to pop them on there. They're right there. Where are you going? You want a spoon, do you? Okay. Where are they going that way? 12, 3, 6, 9 o'clock. Yeah? Get it? No. 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock. Good. Turn that one up the other way. Yeah, and alternate it. Gotta make it look beautiful, son. That's it. There. Right. Mm. So let's look at this. Can we see this salmon, Emily, there? Yeah, it's still yep. So, what I want to do is, that's a little bit warm, so I'm going to use a tea towel. And then I'm just going to break it like that. You see how it just flakes apart? No, yeah? It is, yeah. So it is just cooked. And that is the secret, is just to cook it simply. And that water that we added to the pan just stopped it cooking instantly and has given it time to rest and pop some flavour. Do you want to try this, Sam? Yeah. 
That's Sam. Son, even. <laughs> Who's Sam? Sam's the other one. Do you want to try this? Um, what taste? Lemon. No? No. Oh, it smells good. It smells good. No, I prefer the rice. You're eating the rice, are you? You can have a little bit from here if you like. There we go. You have curry at school, Darren, don't you? And then what I'm actually going to do is some of this water, it's just got so much flavour in it, I'm not going to waste it. So I've almost created a sauce. And in fact, if I just pop that on the heat, I could reduce that down and make it more intense as a flavour. Then we'll get our eggs. This is where it becomes kedgery now, to me. And this is such a nice way to sort of serve Serve it for everybody. Pop that egg in there. There we go. One more. You see how that's reducing down, Thomas? That means the water's coming out of there, so the flavour is intensified. Right, right. What I want, Thomas, is a little sprinkle of black pepper on each one of those eggs, please. Black, black pepper. Black so, pepper. reduce your cooking liquid. You just get some little hits of flavour, really. It's all about flavour. Layers upon layer of flavour. That's it, less than that. Just a sprinkle. There we go. Alright. That looks pretty good to me. But there you go, that is how to make our kids' kedgery. Hope you get the chance to make this perfect this weekend. On Friday, maybe on Good Friday, have some fish, like a lot of people do. It's super easy, super delicious, absolutely packed full of flavour. Thank you very much for joining us. And we will see you on Saturday for an amazing Easter weekend Sunday roast recipe.